Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is a case of anemia of unknown cause, and this is the contrast enhanced CT of the patient. Clearly, this is the abnormality. There is a solid lesion, presumably a malignant neoplasm, and presumably also the cause of the anemia in this case. We certainly need to know the organ of origin. We have 20 organs or anatomical domains to choose from. I guess some of the viewers may have thought of the small intestine, colon, or peritoneum as the sites of origin of the neoplasm. But uh, let us, before going further with the present case, try to develop a scheme for looking at sectional images of the abdomen and pelvis. 20 organs in four groups. The first group is a group of five organs which are arranged horizontally at the upper part of the abdomen. So you can uh, examine them with the least possible ups and downs, you look at the liver, it leads you to the gallbladder, the common bile duct, and from its lower end, the head of pancreas, the tail of pancreas leads you to the spleen. From there, you can start already the second group by the adrenal, which is at the same level as the upper abdominal organs. And from there, you go with a straight scrolling down no need uh, usually for ups and downs for the kidney, uh, ureter, urinary bladder, and male or female genitalia. And while you are there at the pelvis, you start the colon from the anal canal up. Uh, the colon leads, of course, a, a lot of up and down scrolling, as we will see in the present case. And the most important is not to lose the structure you are tracing from the side. Small intestine, in the normal situation, you can just have a global look at them. And in cases of intestinal obstruction or inflammatory bowel disease, you may have a more strict tracing, which sometimes may be difficult. And you continue the gastrointestinal tract up. From the lower esophagus, you go to have a look globally at the lower part of the thorax. And then you start the last group, which is, in fact, uh, a group of anatomical domains rather than organs. So you have the abdominal wall and the diaphragm. This is a very big effort. You look at the a group here in two scrolls, one with an eye oriented at the periphery and the other with an eye oriented to the central parts of the abdomen and pelvis to look at the blood vessels, lymph nodes, and peritoneum, which again, like the small intestine, will be easy to look at in the normal situation. But if you have um, an abnormality such as the abnormalities of the peritoneum, it may sometimes be quite complicated. It is quite important to have a report template that corresponds very well to your scheme of viewing the images. This works magic for the benefit of both the viewing process and the reporting process. Here is a report template based on the scheme. It is important 
when something is normal just to say the word normal because any further description of the normal organs would unnecessarily drain the energy not only of the radiologist but also the physician who will read the report it will mask and dilute the abnormalities which are the most important thing in the report the report should be kept short in a busy hospital or clinic no one has the time to read unnecessary statements back to our case to trace the colon from down up this is the descending colon because we did not include the lower images going up keep tracing do not get distracted by the abnormality We need to go down shortly for the transverse column and up again without losing the trace. Down again for the ascending column. Notice that it is medially displaced and that its place is occupied by the small intestine. And it then sharply crosses from right to left, leading to the cecum, which harbors the lesion located at the left side of the abdomen. A case of carcinoma in immobile seek. Notice here that the small intestine has filled the expected place of the cecum at the right ediac fossa, and this may be a reason some of the radiologists here may think of intestinal malrotation. The difference between mobile cecum and intestinal malrotation is clear. Mobile cecum is the failure of the last stage of intestinal development in which the cecum loses its mesentery, moves to the right iliac fossa and resides there in the retroperitoneal space. This happens well after the correct rotation of the gut is established. How do we know from the images here that it is not a case of malrotation? The two cardinal features of correct intestinal rotation are there. The third part of the duodenum crosses normally between the aorta and superior mesenteric artery, and the relationship of the superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric vein is correct. That's to say the vein is on the right side of the artery. Therefore, we do not have an element of malrotation in this case. Just not to forget the carcinoma staging while we are busy with the rare anomaly of the cecum, there are some lymph nodes posterior to the cecal mass, which are in fact very small and could be non-specific, and they are the only lymph nodes we could see in the abdomen and pelvis. However, there are some peritoneal nodules anterior to the lesion, and these are the only uh, malignant neoplastic spread 
features in the abdomen and pelvis, the rest of the peritoneum and the liver were clear. This is an example of the report of the present case. If you want, you can pause the video and read it at your ease. It addresses the organs with abnormalities, the colon, the peritoneum, the tiny lymph nodes, and the small intestine as it occupies the site of the mobile cecum. As we have agreed upon, the normal organs and anatomical domains are just described as normal and then don't forget to put your conclusion as clearly and as shortly as possible. This is the 3D image of the colon of the same patient seen from the front. This is the normal location of the cecum as it should be and you can see how the cecum in this case failed to travel the last four inches or so to its destination. This is a rotation of the colon to see it from the back, don't get confused. I'm just doing this to show the appendix. This is the appendix here and the um, tumor is seen as a filling defect. Cancer is not one of the recognized complications of mobile cecum. It has been just a coincidence. There are three other clinical scenarios which are important to consider in a case of a mobile cecum. Mobile cecum is more likely to have cecal volvulus and colicocolic intersusception compared to the normal cecum because its mesentery has not entirely uh, disappeared. The third clinical consideration is acute appendicitis which will have different clinical features because of the abnormal location of the appendix and may be difficult to diagnose. Therefore, it is important to educate the patient with the incidentally discovered mobile cecum about these scenarios and not just keep the information in the records because these are acute conditions uh, which may happen anywhere while the patient is away from his or her records. Here are our learning points. And here is our next case. It is a case of a male, 29 years old, with loss of weight. We have a chest X-ray and contrast enhanced CT of the abdomen and pelvis. 